Hi, this is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to crochet the Little Monstera Teething Ring, which is a free pattern you'll find on MooglyBlog.com. Please go to the link in the description or search for MooglyBlog Little Monstera Teething Ring. There you'll find both the written directions and the right and left-handed video tutorials and links to all the supplies you need. To make this pattern, you need about 17 yards of lily sugar and cream, or if you prefer, you could use Burnett Handicrafter. It's always a great substitute. You will also need a USH 5mm crochet hook. This one happens to be by Susan Bates. And for this pattern, we also need one more unusual supply, a wooden ring, about two to two and a half inches in diameter. A variety of sizes should work. And of course, finally, we need our standard crochet supplies, yarn needle, stitch markers, and scissors. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at the Little Monstera Teething Ring. As you can see, the Little Monstera Teething Ring consists of two parts, the portion we crochet and the wooden ring. Again, anywhere from two to two and a half inches or so in diameter, which is the measurement across, should work. The exact measurement isn't so important. The same thing as for gauge. We use the recommended hook size with the yarn and the leaf turns out to be a pretty good size. Whether you're feeling a little tense or a little loose, it'll all be fine. We start at one end right here. We work our way up through the leaf to the point. Then we work our way around, make the loop and finish our edging all sort of in one fell swoop here. Then after the crochet portion is done, I do recommend that you block it out and then it's ready to attach to the ring. To attach it to the ring, you simply lay the loop of the monstera leaf over the wooden ring here, just like this. Then you can just wrap the monstera leaf itself right around and pull it right through that loop. Just take your time, pull it all the way through here, give it a nice snug pull and it's nicely attached and ready for teething. The great thing about this design is that the monstera leaf itself is quite light and it's 100% in cotton. So it makes a great uh, little washcloth or drool bib in a pinch for cleaning up things with baby. And of course you can take it right back off to throw it in the wash as needed. To begin the little monstera teething ring, we start with a chain of 27, as you can see here. Just started with a regular slip knot and chain 27. But the first thing we need to do after we get that chain made is break out two of our stitch markers. We're going to put stitch markers in the bottom of chains number 14 and 15, counting from the chain closest to the hook. So we don't want to include the active loop, of course, that we've got our hook in. I'm going to go ahead and set that aside. But then we start counting in that very next chain here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14. We get to that 14th stitch or chain. I'm going to go ahead and put my stitch marker right under those top two loops. And then 15, of course, is the very next one. So we'll put our stitch marker right in the bottom of 15. I just wanna make sure I don't split the yarn or anything here because I am going to be working into those chains. But we're going to let those little stitch markers there hang out the whole time until we come back around for the edging and they're going to come in very handy. They're going to mark where we're going to add that loop that we use to attach it to the teether or to the wooden ring, I should say. But for right now, they just hang out right there. So we can put our hook right back in our loop and continue on with row one. So once we have those stitches marked, then we skip the chain closest to the hook and single crochet in the next three chains. I'm choosing to work into the bottom hump of the chain, but if you want to, you can work under the top two loops. I just find that this gives me a really nice edge to work back into when, it come, when it's time to come back around for that edging. So we've got one and two, and then three single crochets here. There we are. And then we are going to half double crochet in the next two stitches. So we yarn over first, find that next stitch and work a half double crochet. There's one and two. There we are. Then we are going to double crochet two together twice. So to do that, we yarn over, we find that next chain, insert our hook, yarn over, pull through two, stop with two loops remaining on the hook, yarn over again, find that next chain, Go right in there, yarn over and pull up our loop, 
yarn over and pull through two. Now we have three loops left on our hook. We yarn over and pull through all three to finish our first double crochet two together. You can see it's got two little legs, but just one little V at the top, so it's one stitch. Now we need to do that again. We yarn over, find the next chain, insert our hook, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. Stop with two loops left on the hook, yarn over again, go into the next chain, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, and finally, yarn over and pull through all three loops to finish our second double crochet two together. Then we half double crochet in the next two stitches. So we yarn over, find the next stitch. There's one half double crochet. There's our second half double crochet. There we are. And then we are going to single crochet in the next four stitches. And just to make sure you're in the right spot, those stitch markers should mark the middle two of those four. So let's go ahead and make those four single crochets. Here's one, two, this one should be in that first marked stitch, three should land in that second marked stitch. There we go. Let me make that one again. I split the yarn just a little bit. When that happens, I always prefer to redo the stitch. So there's three, and then I move on to that next chain for four. There we are. And those two marked stitches right there as we work up through our leaf, those are kind of going to be the center point of our leaf. If we look at the finished one here, you can kind of see there's that series of four single crochets are gonna carry up for the majority of the leaf. So now we sort of repeat what we did on the other side, but mirroring it in the opposite direction here. So the next thing we do is half double crochet in the next two stitches. So there's one and two. Then we double crochet two together twice, just as we did before. So we work the first stitch over the next two chains. There's the first half. Go in the next chain for the second half. There we are. Yarn over and pull through all three to finish our first double crochet two together. Then we begin our second one here. There's the first half. Yarn over, find the next chain for the second half. And yarn over and pull through all three to finish our second one there. Then we are going to half double crochet in the next two stitches again. Again, just mirroring what we did on that first half. One and two. And then if you recall, we started with three single crochets. So we should finish with three single crochets. So we can double check and see there's three chains left there. So we know we're in the right spot. So there's one and two and three. Finally, in that last stitch, am I going the right spot there? There we go, right next to the slip knot there. There we go. Sometimes my slip knot likes to pull a little open. So I just give it a little tug right there after I make that last stitch and that is what your little monster teething ring should look like at the end of row one with a total of 22 stitches. So to begin row two, we start with a chain one and turn or turn and chain one, however you prefer to do it. And then we want to put two single crochets in the very first stitch. So here's one and then two. There we go. Then single crochet in the next two stitches one, two, then half double crochet in the next two stitches, one, two, then we double crochet two together, but just once. And if you look closely, you'll see those two legs are going to be working in the tops of the two double crochet two togethers we did in the previous row. So same thing, we start in the first one, Stop with two lo loops left on our hook, yarn over, go into the next one. Three loops left on our hook, we yarn over and finish our double crochet two together. Then we half double crochet in the next two stitches. One, oop, get that one all the way through there, and two. 
And that brings us right back to the middle here where it's time to single crochet in those next four stitches. So again, this is going to line up right on top of the four single crochets we did in the previous row, right in the center here. So one, two, three, and four. And then of course, it's time to mirror what we did again on the second half. So after those four single crochets, we work half double crochets in the next two. One and two. Then double crochet two together, which again, you can always check your place, make sure we're working back into those two double crochet two togethers we did in the previous row. Just a little visual hint to make sure we're in the right spot here. So there's that double crochet two together. Then we have double crochet in the next two stitches. One and two. There we are. Single crochet in the next two stitches. One, two. And then we work two double crochets in the very last stitch. We only have one stitch left, so we know that worked out just right. So we go into that last stitch and make two single crochets there, just like we put two single crochets in the first stitch of this row. And that is what your little Monstera teething ring should look like at the end of row two, with again, a total of 22 stitches. So to begin row three, we start again with a chain one and two single crochets right into that very first stitch. So there's one and two. After that, we chain six, but we are going to be working back into these chains, so you don't want to make them too tightly. Give that hook a little extra tug if you need to, to make sure that you make nice chains that you'll be able to work back into for the next row. So there's three, four, five, and six. There we are. Then we wanna make sure we aren't twisting our chain or our work, so you can sort of hold those out and make sure they're nice and straight. And we are going to skip the next eight stitches and single crochet in the next four. So we know those four are going to land right on top of there, but we want to count out to make sure we land in the right spot. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stitches that we skip. That puts us right there for one, two, three, and four single crochets. And again, those should line up right on top of those four single crochets right in the middle there. So after those four single crochets, of course, we mirror what we did on the first half. We chain six again. Again, making sure to keep those a little bit loose so that we can work back into them easily. So there's three, four, five, six. And then we skip eight stitches again, which lands us right in that very last stitch where we put two single crochets to mirror what we did at the beginning of row three. So now at the end of row three here, there we go, you should have a total of only eight single crochets in this row. Two here, chain six, four there, chain six, and two right at the end. So now we're ready to begin row four. We start again with a chain one and then two single crochets into that very first stitch. One and two. Then we single crochet in the next stitch. And for this row of instructions, when we say stitch, it may mean chain or it might be in stitch. We're just going to work them in order in the order of the stitches they present themselves. So we've got two single crochets in that first stitch. We single crochet in the next stitch, which would be another single crochet. Then we half double crochet in the next stitch, which is going to be a chain. And that first one does tend to be a little tight, which is why Caution you to make sure to work loosely there, but I'm just gonna take my time and get my hook on in there. There we are, so there's our half double crochet. Then we half double crochet, single crochet, two together twice. This is kind of an unusual stitch and it's actually how I prefer to do all of my half double crochet two togethers. I find it's a little bit less bulky and looks a little bit more like a standard half double crochet at the end of the day. So here's how we do that. We're going to yarn over as for a half double crochet and go into the next stitch. Again, this is a chain, so take your time getting on in there. We yarn over and pull up our loop. 
Now, because it's a half double crochet two together, we're going to leave all three of those loops on the hook and come right to the next chain. There we are, we simply insert our hook, yarn over and pull up a loop. Now we have four loops on our hook, but to finish it, we yarn over and pull through all four of those loops. It's a little bit less bulky than a half double crochet two together because that usually involves yarning over and pulling through five loops. So I think this one looks a little bit more like a regular half double crochet. So that's our first one, we need to do it again. We yarn over, find the next stitch, get our hook in there, yarn over and pull up our loop, stop with three loops left on the hook, find the next chain, we have to get in there with our hook. Let me see, there we go. Yarn over and pull up our loop, four loops left on the hook, we yarn over, and pull through all four of those loops. So those are our two half double crochet two togethers. Then we half double crochet in the next stitch, yarn over, this should be the last one of those chains right there hanging out. There we are, because next we single crochet in the next four stitches. One, two, three, and four. And as you can see, that lined up with those four single crochets from before. So now we're back to working in those chains and mirroring what we did before. We half double crochet in the next stitch. Again, that first chain always wants to be a little closer. So go ahead and take your time. I like to really use my hook to sort of tease the different strands of the chain apart there. There we go. Got to get back through it then. All right, there is that half double crochet. And then we're going to work the half double crochet, single crochet, two together twice. So we yarn over, go into the next chain. Yarn over and pull up our loop. Three loops on the hook, go to the next chain. Get our hook in there. Working the chains is a little bit fiddly but it really does give us that Monstera sort of broken leaf look that we're looking for. There we go. Now we've got four loops on our hook. We yarn over and pull through all four. And now we need to do that one more time. So we yarn over, go into that next chain. A Little bit easier here in the middle, pull up our loop, find the next chain. Yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all four. There we go. And then we return to our instructions and we half double crochet in the next stitch. And that should be our last chain hanging out here on this side. There we are. That one was pretty easy. After that, we single crochet in the next stitch. We're back to our single crochets here at the end. And then we've got one stitch left. So two single crochets in that very last stitch. So there's one. And then there is two. There we are. So at the end of row four, you have a total of 18 stitches made. To begin row five, we start again with a chain one and two single crochets in the first stitch. It's how we begin most of our rows for this pattern, but not all of them. We'll do some other stuff here in the next couple rows. But for now, we chain one and two single crochets in that very first stitch. Then we're going to do another one of those chain and skip rows put another little break in our leaf. We're gonna do chain four this time. And like I say, really pull those chains up nice and high so you can get into them later. So there's three and four. I'm gonna pay a little extra attention to that last one right there. Then what we do is we skip six single, cro six stitches rather, and single crochet in the next four. Obviously that's gonna put us back in that center four, but we can count out to make sure we're in just the right spot. One, two, three, four, five, six stitches skipped then four single crochets right in those four center single crochets. So there's two, three, four. Then it's time to chain again. One, two, three, four. And if we skip stitch six stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six, that lands us right in that last stitch where we put those final two single crochets. One and two. 
So at the end of row five, we're back down to just eight single crochets. Two, four, and two. Now for row six, we're gonna abandon our chain one and we're gonna start with a chainless starting double crochet. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and turn my work first. I wanna sort of get it straightened out here. Then I'm going to pull my hook up to the height of a double crochet. I'm going to secure the top of my loop with my forefinger here. Yarn over with that loop itself. Insert my hook into that first stitch. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Notice I have not let go of the top of that loop with that finger. Then I yarn over, pull through the loop I pulled up and behind that yarn over. Then finally, I can release that loop, yarn over and pull through two to finish it off. Again, that's the chainless starting double crochet. And I do have a separate video tutorial for that here on the Moogly Blog YouTube channel. Moving on, we then double crochet in the next two stitches. So that means we move on. We've only got one stitch worked in that first stitch. Double crochet in the next stitch and then double crochet in the next stitch after that. And of course that brings us to our chains. So we just treat our chains just like we treat our stitches. Double crochet right into there as well. There we are. After that, we work a double crochet two together. So same as we did before, we yarn over, go into that next chain, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, stop with two loops on the hook, yarn over again, Go into the next chain here. There we go. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through two. And then yarn over and pull through all three to finish off the stitch. After that, we half double crochet in the next stitch, which should be our last chain here. Before our center, that is. There we are. And that puts us right back in those center four single crochets. So same thing. Single crochet in the next four stitches. One two, three, and four. There we go. Then we need to mirror the other side. So we half double crochet in the first chain on this side here. There we go. And then next we double crochet two together. So we yarn over, find that next chain. Get in there, there we go. Start that double crochet, stop with two loops left on the hook, yarn over, find the next chain. Insert our hook in there, yarn over and pull up our loop, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through all three to finish. Then we simply double crochet in the last three stitches. So that's gonna be that next chain and those last two single crochets from the previous row. There's one right there in the chain. There we go. And then two will be in that next single crochet. And then finally, the third one goes into that very last stitch. So at the end of row six, you should have a total of 14 stitches. For row seven, we go back to the chain one start, but then we just put one single crochet in that first stitch. But now it's time to do a chain and skip again. So we're going to chain three. Again, we are going to work back into those chains. So let's make sure they're a little bit loose. There we are. After we chain three, we skip five. And then we're going to single crochet in the next two. So we're actually going to skip the first one of that, that big set of four we've been doing here. So let's count it out. One, two, three, four, five. Find the next one. Single crochet in that stitch single crochet in the next stitch. So if you followed that all the way down, that should match up with those two marked stitches right down there. Then we do our chain three again. Again, keep it a little bit loose. One, two, three, skip five stitches. One, two, three, four, five. Puts us in that very last stitch, single crochet in that very last stitch. There we are, oops. Dropped a loop there, let me try that one again. All righty, perfect. So at the end of row seven, you're actually only going to have four single crochets. One, two, and one. For row eight, we're going to pull out that chainless starting double crochet again. So we turn our work, pull that loop up to the height of a double crochet, 
secure the loop at the top, yarn over with that loop itself, insert our hook right in that first stitch, that last single crochet we made, pull up our loop, yarn over, pull through that loop and right behind that yarn over, then yarn over and finally pull through those last two loops. Then we double crochet in the next stitch, which is going to be our first chain here that we encounter for this row. So we wanna take our time and get in there. There we are. So I really do try and take the time to make them loose. I don't wanna make them so loose that they become floppy, but of course, getting back in there, make it a little bit easier. There we go. Just take our time, get that double crochet pulled through there. Alrighty. So then we're going to half double crochet, single crochet two together. So we'll yarn over, find that next chain, yarn over and pull up our loop. Got three loops left on our hook there. Find that next chain, it's gonna be our last chain. We go in there, pull up a loop. We've got four loops left on the hook. Yarn over and pull through all four of those loops. Then we're going to single crochet two together, which is going to be over those two single crochets right there in the middle. So we insert our hook in the first one, pull up a loop, insert our hook in the second one, pull up a loop. Now we've got three loops on the hook yarn over and pull through all three to finish off that stitch. Then we need to half double crochet, single crochet, two together again in these next two chains. So we yarn over, go into that next chain. That one looks nice and big, there we go. Pull up our loop, go into the next chain. Pull up a loop, four loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through all four, like so. Then we double crochet in the last two stitches. So the next chain and the last stitch right there. Easy enough to end this row. So there's one. And then one in that very last single crochet right there. Alrighty. So at the end of row eight, you should have a total of seven stitches. It's looking a little funky, but we're going to close up our leaf here in the next row. For row nine, we're not going to chain anything. We're just going to go ahead and turn and we're going to skip the first three stitches. So that'd be one, two, and three. Puts us right down in that single crochet two together right there in the middle. What we want to do is double crochet, single crochet two together in this center stitch and in the very last stitch to really sort of just pull that tip of our leaf together. So we yarn over, go right in that center stitch. Remember we skip those first three, puts us right in the middle. Pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. Stop with two loops left on the hook. Then we skip the next two stitches, which gives us that last stitch. Take our time, get our hook in there. Yarn over and pull up a loop. And now we've got three loops left on the hook. We yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. And that brings our little leaf to a point. We've only made one stitch here in row nine and we're ready for our edging and attaching loop round. So at the end of row nine, we do want to turn and then we can chain one and we're simply going to single crochet evenly all the way around the edge of our leaf until we get to that very first marked stitch. So there's not really a specific number of stitches you need to work here. You just want to work evenly and everybody's gauge is going to affect that a little bit. For me personally, when I work into the side of a row with a single crochet, I tend to just work one single crochet in there. When I come to the side of a row with a double crochet or a chainless starting double crochet, then I will work two single crochets in the side of that double crochet. This seems to be a rule of thumb that works out really well for me, but again, everybody's a little different. So especially as you go around curves and make sort of turns around your leaf, if you feel like you need to add an extra stitch to really get it to lay nice and flat, then that's totally fine. You can definitely just put those stitches wherever they look good for you. Just keep single crocheting right on around your leaf as you come down here to the bottom of that first row. Of course, you've got those great bottom of those chains to work into, so that makes it extra easy. But keep crocheting along evenly right here along the edge, and I'll see you when we get to that first marked stitch. So as you can see, I've just single crocheted evenly around my leaf, and now I've come to that first marked stitch. So what I want to do is go ahead and single crochet in that first marked stitch. I'm going to go ahead and move that stitch marker out of my way here. I don't need it anymore. And then I need to make 
12 foundation double crochets. Normally when we talk about foundation double crochets, it's the first row of a round, but I really love throwing them in the middle of a pattern when I need to take off in a new direction, but I don't want just a simple chain loop. So to do the foundation double crochets, what we're going to do for our first one here is we yarn over, because it's going to be a double crochet, and we're going to come right back in that same stitch we worked that single crochet into. We're gonna yarn over and pull up a loop. Then we're gonna treat it just as if it was a foundation double crochet. We yarn over and pull through just that bottom loop to make the chain at the bottom of our first stitch. Then we yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. So that's our first foundation double crochet. We need to make 11 more for the rest of them. Standard foundation double crochet instructions. Yarn over, go into the two loops at the bottom of the previous foundation double crochet, pull up a loop. That makes right there, we've got our active loop, we've got our yarn over, we've got the chain at the bottom of this stitch. So we yarn over and pull a loop up through that chain to start our double crochet. Yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over and pull through two. So now we've got two foundation double crochets made. As I said, we need a total of 12. So let's keep going. Yarn over, go into the bottom loops of the previous stitch. Oop, make sure we get just under those two bottom loops there. There we go. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Now that's the chain at the bottom of this stitch. Yarn over and pull up a loop through that chain. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. So continue just like that until you have a total of 12 foundation double crochets made. Okay, so as you can see here, I've made a total of 12 foundation double crochets, but now we need to connect to that next marked stitch so we can finish off our loop, of course, and then continue single crocheting around the rest of our leaf. So what we want to do here is what I've dubbed a joining single crochet, just for lack of a better name. What we're going to do is don't yarn over first, we're gonna be doing a single crochet, but we do still want to insert our hook under those bottom two loops of the previous, the last foundation double crochet we made, just as if we were making another foundation stitch. We haven't yarned over, we've got our active loop, we've pulled the loop up through the bottom of that, it's going to squish this down a little bit, and that's totally okay. Come all the way back down here and find that next marked stitch, our last marked stitch. Insert our hook in there, find our yarn end here, there we are. Go ahead and yarn over and pull up a loop. Go ahead and pull that nice and tight. We're not gonna be working back into any of these stitches or anything here, this is our last round. Three loops left on the hook, we yarn over, and pull through all three. So as you can see, that way, the bottom of that foundation double crochet doesn't end up just sort of flapping in the wind there, and it makes a really nice connection that matches our first side. After that, we are done with that stitch marker, so we can definitely move that on out of the way, and then just continue adding your single crochet edging until you get right back to that very first single crochet you made up here, and then you can join and finish off. So after you've worked those single crochets around the remainder of the edging, you can join to that first single crochet you made, weave in your ends, and simply attach it to the ring as shown at the beginning of the video. And that's how to crochet your own little Monstera teething ring. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you give this pattern a try. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.